given to you. Make sure you adhere to that demon that has been given to you. Make sure you catch and don't let go of the iman that has been given to you. Certain things have been graced to you. Make sure you hold it fast. And the reason that this explanation is there is that while iman has been graced to us and a lot of these things happen to us because of certain good deeds which our forefathers did, you and me who were born into a Shia family, we never asked God to give us, bring us into this, into this family. It was given to us on a silver platter. We're not talking about those who have converted. Majority of us have been born into a Shia family. From the time we've opened our eyes, we say, Ya Hussain, Ya Hussain. We say, Ya Ali Madad, Ya Ali Madad. We've never done anything to deserve it. It's been graced to us. Allah doesn't give you anything free. So whatever we've got is probably as a result of what our good deeds, our fathers and the mothers and our forefathers have done. So we are benefiting it. Having understood, God says, whatever has been given to you, whatever has been graced to you, your responsibility is, you had no say in getting it. But now that you've got it, you need to hold it. Why hold it? Because there is a possibility that this iman that has been given to you can go away. The question comes, can an iman go away? Once I say, Ya Ali Madad, once I hear the name Hussain and my hand comes to my heart, is it possible that that iman can go away? The Prophet says, yes. The Imam says, yes. And that is why God says, Ya ayyuhalladhina amnu, now that you are benefiting, abjo iman se barkhordar ho, make sure you adhere to it, you hold fast, you don't let it go. Because we've got riwayat. Certain actions cause the iman to go away. Certain actions that man does causes the iman to go away, loses the iman. So you've got this tradition, la yasruq sariqun illa wadhahaba imanahu hayna sirqihi. So whenever a thief is actually committing the theft, at that point of the commitment of that sin, iman goes from his body. When a person commits fornication, commits adultery, when he's committing that evil, indecent act, at that point of time, Iman goes away from him. You know, remember we talked about death and sleep and soul. When a person goes to sleep, the soul moves out of the body. When he's about to wake up and death has not been ordained, soul comes back. Iman is exactly in the same way. At times when man commits sins, when man goes against the sanctity of God, when he violates that holy position of the obedience of God, at that point of time, Iman goes away. And that is what the Prophet says. When individuals do these sins, at that point of committing the sins, Iman goes away. But then it comes back. Then he's trying to do sins, it goes away. And it comes back. But there are certain sins that... We just mentioned certain sins, Iman goes away. Comes back. But certain sins are such that when a person commits those sins, when he opposes the, the, the lofty position of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he goes into confrontational mode with God, at the time those sins... They don't let the Iman go away and then bring it back. They actually eat away the Iman. They actually collapse the Iman. And that is where you got the tradition. In al Hasad, la ya'akulul Iman, kama ya'akulul nar al Hatab. Hasad, jealousy, that we talked about zina, that we talked about theft. Sometimes in our mindset, we consider certain things to be greater than certain things. But Islam has different ideas. Because we try to understand Islam according to our mindset. We try to understand Islam according to what we want to, to interpret as. We have a certain idea. Islam says, no, that is not my idea. That is your idea. That is your religion. My idea is something else. So if I were to ask you, is killing a bigger sin or lying a bigger sin? Everybody would raise their hands up and say, killing is a bigger sin. The Prophet says, no, murder is not a bigger sin. In comparison to lying, lying is a bigger sin. 
Rabat says, somebody says, how important, how, how big is lying in terms of the gravity in your eyes and the eyes of Islam? He says, in my opinion, a woman can sin, can commit the sin of murder. Ajab this is, huh? A woman can murder, a woman can commit zina, but a woman cannot lie. Ajab this is, all along, if you were to ask anybody, you say, murder is greater. Islam says, no, in my eyes, lying is greater than murder. Again, there's a big philosophy behind it. That why the Prophet says, lying in my... A mu'min can fornicate. A mu'min can murder. But a mu'min cannot lie. So sometimes we perceive certain things in our consciousness and how we wanted to perceive the religion. God has a different concept. Over here it comes the same thing. That when we are trying to understand, the Qurda Rivayat says, and... Al Hasado, Yaakulul Iman, Kama Yaakulun Nar al Hatab, envy, jealousy, hatred towards what people are getting. This Jalan Johota, Hasad Johoti, Yejo Dusrek and Isbatoti, he's got this, I have not got this. He's achieving this, I have not achieved this. He's reached that position, I have not reached that position. So I need to pull him down, I need to pull him down, I need to pull him down, I need to talk so that his value in the public goes down. I need to do things that he's benefiting, that benefit stops. Saying so this hasad eats away the iman just as fire eats away firewood. You know firewood? You put firewood into the fire, it immediately engulfs it in flames. It's saying hasad eats away the iman as fire eats away the firewood. So in one state, you see, when a person commits sin, the iman goes, then it comes back. Certain cases, certain sins are such that iman doesn't come back. It reduces the iman. It, keep noise, it keeps gnawing away the iman. It keeps eating away the iman till it becomes hollow. And when this keeps on happening, then you know what Quran says? When you keep doing, you keep persisting with sins that now does not cause the Iman to go away and come back when the sin is completed. These sins are such, they absolute make a person's Iman hollow. They hollow it out till a time reaches that Quran says, a time comes when a person commits sins against the holy sanctity of God to such an extent that then a stage is reached that the Iman has become so weak and it has been reduced to such a level that now he rejects the signs of God and he now ridicules and mocks the sign of God. That means now this Iman has become so weak that it does not stand the test of time. Instead of obeying to his Iman, instead of being followers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he stands up in opposition. He rejects the signs of God. He mocks the signs of God. Listen to this incident. Fudail ibn Ayyad. Fudail ibn Ayyad has a very interest, interesting history. A man who was a dacoit. Something happens, changes. When he changes, he changes in such a way that he becomes one of the awliya of God. About Fudail, you don't want to go into history about Fudail. Ten minutes to finish the khutbah. But what he started off, what he converts, he becomes such a person, a dacoit. You and me say, gundo hato. Thug. Robber. Caravans that would pass, he would rob those caravans. Something happens, he changes. And he changes such a way, it becomes one of the awliya of God. About him, it is said, once he changes, who changed? Who changed? Be'abiyan tummomi, sixth imam is saying about her. When he changes, he changes in such a way, it becomes one of the awliya of God. Rabat say when, Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad, awamullah sallam. When he changes, he changes in such a way that he becomes one of the awliya of God. Rabbi say once he changes, he, Allah graced him with the power. Anybody sick, if he would touch him on the head, he would cure him. Anybody sick, not curing, not curing, not curing, whatever happens. He would come to Fudail, Fudail would put his hands upon him, he would get cured. This was Fudail after changing. 
Fudail has a had a has a student. Now once he came, this he started to uh, starts teaching the people. He starts advising the people. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. This is what I have benefit from the change. One of his students, one of his you know, when a teacher teaches, he's got certain students who are very close to him. Very close. One student very close to him. And Fudail had high hopes about him that this person when he grows up is going to become extremely he's going to carry on my tradition, my lineage. It happens that this person falls sick. Fudail is, is, is informed this person has fallen sick. Fudail goes to do ayadat. When he goes inside to do ayadat, what does he see? This person lying onto the bed. As soon as he sees him, Fudail realizes this is the maradul maut. This is the Sickness of death. So he tells the students, I'm so pained to see you going. But who can fight God? Before you go, now let's recite the kalama and the shahadatain so that your journey becomes safe. That's one of the concepts of talqeen. You will talk about it if you get time. This is say, Ashhadu la ilaha illallah. His close student, one of the most prominent students, one of the favorite students, bahut umid thi se, ki ye bada ho kar hai kuch banega. You know, everybody has got this a teacher. Sing, say, Ashhadu Allah, Allah, Allah. He says, I don't want to say Ashhadu Allah, Allah. This person is dying. He says, My friend, say, Ashhadu Allah, Allah, Allah. He said, I don't want to say Ashhadu Allah. He's saying, But why are you not saying Ashhadu Allah? You're going to die. I can see signs of death in you. He's saying, No, I think God is a dhalim, God is an oppressor. It hit him like hitting somebody with a brick. I said, you're supposed to be my, my favorite student? What has happened? I said, I don't want to say, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. I don't want to say, Ashadu. saying, my friend, you don't have time, huh? I can see signs you're about to leave. This is the final moment. I said, Ashadu Allah, I said, I don't want to say. He doesn't say, he passes away. Fudail begins to weep, not so much at losing him, but at losing him in this fashion. The dafan and kafan and whatever and whatever takes place. Fudail cannot sleep at night. He thinks something has happened. How can my favorite student turn this way? Next day morning he goes to his house, he knocks the door. The wife opens, saying, oh, my husband's teacher. Come inside, I say, forget the formalities. Tell me. The student of mine, I had put my eyes upon him as the future person to continue my, my, my activities. This is the end. There has to be something. Tell me what you know if you know. As Fudel talks to the wife, she begins to weep. He's saying, I used to tell him, change, but he never changed. He's saying, change? What? In front of me, he was, he was a star student. Everything was right about him. He's saying, as that was outside. In the house there was something. Saying what? He's saying over a period of certain years he had developed a habit. Saying what habit? He said every night he would take a glass and consume a little bit of alcohol. And I would tell him, you're not supposed to do this. And he would keep saying, I know what I'm doing, but I know God is Rahman and Rahim. And I would keep telling him it doesn't work that way. And he says no. For years he would do that. Outside, no. But every night before he would go to sleep, a little consumption of alcohol, khamr. So I would keep telling him, it's not right. And he would keep ignoring me. For they realized, one thing done continuously, eating away the iman. Quran says, Individuals who persist in certain sins, not only does the iman not go away and come back, but at certain times the iman becomes so weak that it goes away continuously and persistently. At the end, he rejects the signs of God. The most favorite student of Fudail ibn Ayyad dies without deciding the shahadatain.
Quran says, Ya ayyuhalladheen amanu, aminu. This, this religion, Quran says, this iman that has been given to you, don't take it for granted that just because you have got it in a silver platter for being born in a Shia family is going to constantly remain with you. You need to emphasize, you need to work in order to hold it forward. Otherwise, the consequences could be like the student of Fudail ibn Ayyad. And this is why the sixth imam, Sadiq Ali Muhammad, Ja'far ibn Muhammad and Sadiq alayhi salatu wa salam. Going with his companions on a trick, very, very quickly. Going with his companions. On a certain place, they decide it's time for prayers. So let's pitch tents. They pitch tents. Imam leads the prayers. Afterwards, Imam gets up, goes to the corner, starts reciting the dua. He observes one old man. Very diligently crying after prayers, du'as, raises his hands. Oh Allah, give me this. Oh Allah, give me that. Oh Allah, neighbors, fulan, relatives, fulan, 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 give him this, give him that, do this, do that. Oh sallallahu ala Muhammad, ala Muhammad, finished off the prayers. Imam was listening to his prayers. Everything that he could want, he had wanted. Mane a'ap, mane a'ap, ane a'ap, anu akar, isko ye de, usko wo de, fulan, 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 fulan. Du'as finished. When he finished, Imam gets up and taps him on the shoulder. He said, what were you doing? He said, Ibn Rasulullah, I was asking prayers. He said, what prayers were you asking? He said, I, I, I asked for your recommendations. I asked for myself. I asked for my family. I asked for my neighbors. I asked for something. He said, fair enough. I'm not contesting that. He said, but how did you end your prayers? He said, but I ended my prayers asking for everybody. He said, but I did not ask, see you asking for the salamati of your iman. So he said, but I was born in the Shia family. I, from the time we've been born, it was Ali Ali, Hussein Hussein. From the time I understood I've been seeing you, from the time I've been with you, I get inspired by you. So what is it? He said, fair enough, you've got the Iman now. But are you certain that when you die, that Iman will continue to remain with you? He said, no, I'm not sure. What should I do? Then Imam gives the rule of the thumb. Six. Whenever you ask du'as, you must always end. Ki Allah, make my aqibat be khair. Make sure that when I go from this world, this iman is with me. That what has been given to me as a gift, what has reached me without any effort from my side, continues to remain based on that, on that injunction of the Quran. Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, aminu billah. O oh, you who have been given faith, make sure you hold on to the faith. For this you require to keep praying. You've done a good thing praying for yourself. You've done a good thing praying for the others. You've done a good thing for doing prayers for the relatives and your neighbors. But you also need to realize all this will become applicable if your iman remains consistent with you. And for that you need to pray. Allahumma ja'alna awaqiba umurina khaira. Inna ahsan al-hadith wa ablag al kitab Allah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لا فيه خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لا إله إلا هو الحليم الكريم غافر الذنب وقابل التوبة هو الغفور الرحيم نشهد أن لا إله إلا هو العطوف على العباد بجوده والعواد على المذنبين بحلمه ونشهد أن محمد النبي هو حبيبه سيد المرسلين والشفيع المذنبين بعثه رحمة للعالمين صلى الله عليه وآله الداعين إلى سبيل الله بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة قادة الأمم وأولياء النعم بمعدن الرحمة أوسيكم عباد الله بالتوبة عما سلف من ذنوبكم والإنابة عن الأوزار التي يثقلت ظهوركم فإنه تعالى كريم بكم رؤوف عليكم The second khutbah The same message Exhorting myself Encouraging myself Commanding and telling myself And then to you brothers about the need, the emphasis, the importance, the, the absolute priority of exhibiting the taqwa of God, the fear of God, the obedience towards the will of God. 
ألا قد أمركم الله في محكم كتابه بالصلاة على النبيه وحبيبه فقال تعليم لكم التشريف لصفيه إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيد المرسلين وشفيع المذنبين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وعلى امام المسلمين بقائد الغر المحجلين امير المؤمنين علي بن ابي طالب صلوات الله عليه وعلى سيدة النساء العالمين وبضعة خاتم النبيين سيدتنا فاطمة بنت رسول الله صلوات الله والسلام عليها وعلى الحسن المجتبى والحسين الشهيد بكربلاء وعلي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد بموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي عليهم الصلاة والسلام اللهم صل على مولانا صاحب الزمان ما حيا ثار البدع والتغيان هادم يا ابنية الشرك والنفاق حاسد فروع البغي والشقاق صلوات الله والسلام عليه اللهم عجل فرجه وصح المخرجه واجعلنا من المستشهدين بين يديه اللهم اجعلنا ممن يذكر فتنفعه الذكرى إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون الله الرحمن الرحيم الله أكبر الله أكبر <تصفيق> 